As a PC technician, you're going to spend a lot of time fixing and repairing systems. Now, sometimes, depending on where you work, you might have a really nice workshop with all your tools laid out, with everything you need right at your hands. My experience has been that's usually not the case. Usually, you're on call, you gotta go somewhere to fix somebody's system. Might be somewhere in the same building, could be a different building, might even be somewhere else, in the, maybe even a different town. Because of this, you need to put together a toolkit that you can carry around as you go from place to place to repair these systems. It's really important that you do this and that you think ahead of what you will need because if you're gone and you're on site trying to fix something and realize that you need something and you don't have it with you, it's back at the home office, or you just wasted a ton of time. So let's talk about what you can do to build a good toolkit that you can easily carry around. Here's a basic PC repair toolkit. Doesn't look like much, but this small case has just about everything you need. I've had this particular toolkit for about five years now, and it has been a lot of places, repaired a lot of PCs, and even put together a lot of new systems. Everything I pretty much need is here. Your system, you might need to add a few things. However, the basics are, number one, you got to have a screwdriver. Now, in this particular kit, I've got a ratcheting handle, so I can ratchet the handle like this instead of having to reposition my hand every time I want to make a turn. Then I've got an assortment of bits here that go in the end of the handle. I've got Phillips bits and flat bladed bits. These are the ones that you will use almost all the time when working on a PC system. Now I've also got some bits down here that are called Torx bits. Occasionally I've had need of using these, but not very often. A Torx bit looks a lot like an Allen bit. However, it's more of a star shaped rather than a hexagon the way an Allen wrench is. Now on occasion you'll probably need to use a socket as well for some particular bolts in the PC system. So I have a small assortment of commonly used sockets. There's a special adapter here that goes in the end of my ratchet driver that I can attach here to the sockets. In addition, you're going to spend a lot of time fishing out little parts. And as much as we don't like to admit it, it's because we drop them inside the PC case. Okay? I've got two little devices to take care of this. One is just a simple pair of tweezers. These are very, very useful. Reaching down into small spaces and grabbing a hold of a screw or whatever that you dropped and pulling it back out. Now this works much better than your fat fingers. However, sometimes the spaces are even tighter than that. In that case, I've got this little device here that has a little claw. When you press this plunger down, this claw comes out of the bottom and when you release it, the claw closes and grips what it is you're getting hold of and you can pull it out. These two are indispensable. In addition, I like to carry a supply of things that I need frequently when I'm working on a system. For instance, screws. I always need PC screws. There's actually two different types, two different threads that you need. One's a coarse screw, and these are used mostly for covers onto PC cases or securing motherboards to the case or securing expansion cards in the case. But there's also a very fine thread screw that's also used, and that's for attaching CD-ROM drives, sometimes hard drives as well. So I have a supply of both types in here, because you always end up needing them. In addition, I've got a couple of extra jumpers. Now these are used frequently when you're making repairs or building a system. A lot of times you're going to need to put a jumper on a couple of shunts to configure a particular piece of hardware. The problem is a lot of times these shunts get lost along the way and you need to make a configuration change and that shunt that you need for the jumper is gone. It's nice to have an extra supply. In addition, I also keep some standoffs inside this case that I can use when I'm building a system as well to attach the motherboard to the case. Last, I keep a supply of anti-static cleaning wipes. These are great for wiping off and cleaning CRT monitor screens. And these are anti-static, so they won't cause you any ESD-type problems. Now, this is a very basic toolkit. What you end up using might be a little bit different. It depends on what your responsibilities are. However, a good basic toolkit should have a supply of screws, because you might lose one or need an extra one. You should have some kind of screwdriver that has a Phillips and a flat-bladed um, um, tip. You might also need sockets. So have a small set of sockets along with a, a handle to manipulate the sockets with. Also, try to have something in there that you can grab small parts with. Pliers probably too big. A small tool like we saw here works great. And then probably some static wipes 
anti-static wipes so you can clean monitor screens.